Christ Church is an anointed ministry where we use the word of God to win souls for the kingdom of God. We are fishers of men, and our church is uniquely equipped with the largest privately owned aquarium in the world. All of the marine life that you see in our tanks have to go through a time of quarantine. So here is a recap of our previous episode of Quarantine with Pastor Ricky Rush. I'm going to start this out with a pretty strong dose of medicine by telling you to stop looking for uh, all these get rich, get rich quick schemes and stop looking for always having an easy way out. I'm going to start by telling you to quit blaming your race, quit blaming your age, quit blaming your gender, quit blaming your culture as an excuse for why you can't get a job, why you can't keep a job or why you can't be promoted. I'm going to start out by telling you that the truth is that these things you can't control. God requires that you take control, though, of the things you can control. There are some things God said that are beyond your control, but there are some things that you can control, and I expect you to control those because when I release you, I'm going to put something in you, and you're going to be different. You're going to be stronger. You're going to be better. You're going to be wiser. And I'm not talking about a song. I'm talking about a lifestyle. So I'm, I'm having you in this moment for, uh, for, for a minute, just for a minute now, because while you're waiting on God, remember what he's doing now. He's strengthening you. He's not breaking you down. He's getting you ready. The best thing in life, take effort. It's going to take some effort. I don't care if it's education. If you want education, it's taking some effort. It's going to take some, some education takes effort. Achievement of any style takes effort. Successful careers take effort. Spiritual growth and maturity take effort. Thank you, Father. Another episode of Quarantine with Pastor Ricky Rush. Sometimes this year around February, we were doing one service on Sunday morning. We were doing Monday school. And God laid on my heart that we needed to go to three services and that those three services needed to be on Sunday because he was calling us into revival. 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 6 p.m. I hesitated in my heart and in my mind, but not in my spirit because that just didn't seem appropriate. It didn't seem right. It didn't seem, it didn't seem like God was doing that. And then God said, I want you to stand before the people and tell them that for three months, we're going to start going to revival. That was March, April, and May. Um, at that point, we hadn't talked about who and what and what, who the guest speakers would be and, 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 and nothing, nothing. And God started to... And part of my heart, impress upon my heart to tell the people that we're getting ready to go through a season of, of difficult change and we needed to be strengthened. And we needed to go through revival. Now, of course, I, I was trying in my own intellectual um, mentality to figure it out. And sometimes when God is getting ready to do something, we already know how we want God to do it. Um, God has never impressed upon me to ever try to get a bunch of people to join church and all of that. We've always been about uh, letting the Lord use us to prophesy, doing the work of the apostle, doing the work of an evangelist, a pastor and teacher. And then God started to show me, I want you to talk to the people because I have blessed you to operate in all those five foes. And I've always prayed for God to send someone. And God said, it's already in the house. And so he called us into revival. And <clears throat> when we walked into this pandemic that we're in, we were just, I think, two weeks into it, and if I can remember. And we started a 6, 6 p.m. service, Dream Church. And I just knew that this was, okay, this is it, and this is going to be that service where God's going to birth some new ministries and some new ministers and, and just all of that. And <clears throat> I remember God pressing upon my heart. Stop trying to count your chickens before they're hatched. And everybody was 
coming around. We had all these ideas about being digital. And, and then the whole social media uh, spectrum started blowing up with us. And, and God said, just get it prepared. It is not what you think. And I had no idea of what that meant because I didn't have any thoughts about it. I was not a very positive person towards social media. I've not been one of those who thinks that every time you do something, it should get grasp the attention of the world, but it should get the glory of God. And so I'm just a little different in that. Not that everybody does that, not saying that that's what it is. That's just not what my focus has ever been on ministry because it is extremely difficult to stay humility when you know how great God is, to operate in humility when you know how great God is. It is extremely difficult to stay humble when you know how powerful God is. It is extremely difficult to stay level-headed when you know that you shall get whatsoever you say. It is extremely difficult to keep a, a, an humble heart and a, and a servant's attitude when you know that when you speak, your Father is going to grant you and you pray in the Spirit and God's going to empower you and give you the strength and power to, to rebuild or edify and hear from God is very difficult. And w- the one thing you don't need is a whole lot of pictures of you doing something so others can compliment you because at some point you start, you start looking at your likes. You start looking at the public approval and that's how you can judge if you're being effective. And God pulled us into revival and so that's how we got here now. And as much as I was thinking that God was going to start sending, 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 here I am every service preaching to people that I don't see, doing what God instructed me to do and said, God, you send the people. And as we started, I'm thinking, okay, God, here's the team and we're ready. And God said, we're ready, but I'm still building the team. And that's why we're here now. Because you're part of that digital ministry that God has started with this church. It it doesn't necessarily mean that someone has to know how to operate technology. You got to know how to operate by faith. and You got to know how to reach out and and touch God and touch God's people when you can't see them. And we're here now. Then God gave us a scripture. And I want to share that scripture with you. And then we're going to go into the heart of what we hear on episode 27 of quarantine. Because after God spoke, we went into a shutdown. We didn't shut it down. The government shut it down. The nation shut down. And God said, I told you to go in revival. I never told you you'd have 1,000 people. I never told you you'd have 5,000 people. I never told you that the house would be packed. I told you to preach the gospel in season and out of season. And ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, members of IBOC, because you're probably the ones that are here tonight, this is definitely one of those times you could consider being out of season. Who wants to go to church and no one's there? How can you preach and no one shows up? First thing God did was provide for us. God gave us this scripture in 1 Peter. I want you to read this scripture with me. It's the basis of how we got started. It's in the Message Bible. Guys, can you pull it up for me, please? So we, we started reading the scripture, and it says, Friends, when life really gets difficult, and if you're hearing my voice, Okay, we're there. And this was before we went into this now. This is before when God said, I want Ibok to go in revival. He didn't call the city. He didn't call the nation. And if he did, I don't know that. I was to deliver to to this house. He said, friends, when, when life really gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. Now, this is the foundation for where, why we're here now. In case any of you are like, man, we're still doing this. Yeah, man, we're still doing this. Yeah, man, God says you're, just because it's been long doesn't mean that it's finished. Don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. Instead, instead, be glad that you're in the very thick of what Christ experienced. Now, if you can't get joy out of what we're going through now, you might need to check your Christometer because we always want to say we're Christians. And the first part of Christian is the word Christ. Christ means the anointed one. So if you are a Christian, you're anointed for a time like this. And if you're not anointed for a time like this, you might be getting a little frustrated. But we're going through things that only Christians are able to endure. Hey, you might be getting frustrated now because this is a time to go through what Christians anointed people are built for.
instead of being instead of being frustrated thinking God's not on the job be glad that you are in the very thick of what Christ experienced because this is a spiritual refining process with glory just around the corner now that's the scripture that God gave us in every episode that has been our foundational scripture glory is just around the corner what are y'all going through what are we going through pastor rush what are we doing the young people are saying mom dad why can't we go to church read the scripture to them first peter 4 12 and 13 let them hear god speak to them through his word that this is a spiritual refining process and when you go through refining there's some heat applied you don't tell me about how strong you are and how much you love and how much you care if you can't deal with the heat. That's what Christ had to deal with. And when it got tough, he had to realize God is still on the job, even though I'm sitting here on this cross. Now, tonight, as we go into episode 27, question this morning, or what, now, what are we waiting on now? We've gone through this. We've, we've waited through that. We have proven to the world that we can be tested. We have proven to the world that we can go without going to work and God can pay us and we cannot have tissue and we don't have to go out and we don't have to be in the streets. And, yeah, yeah. and so we thought that we were setting the pace. We thought that we were saying, God, okay, we can do this for a little bit, but how long is a little bit and how much does waiting on the Lord really mean? And the question this morning was, okay, what are we waiting on now? And God says, I'm trying to teach you because what you don't realize is where we are right now. And you know what? I, what I really love the most about this, God doesn't give me messages weeks and days ahead of time. God keeps me right at set and go and say, you say this when I say, say this. And I'm just as amazed as you are every single episode. And the reason I don't, I don't have to play like I'm up here performing, I'm, I'm excited because I get to say out loud what God has been speaking into my heart. And I just had no idea that God was saying to us, hey, you know what, son? We're getting ready to go. But we can't go the way we are. We don't. Sometimes people ask for jobs, and I'm trying my best to stay focused. Y'all, it's like um, hearing of a child that, if you've never been around a child that's autistic, they hear so many things coming at them. And it's like when the Holy Spirit starts to speak, you have so much, and I know it sounds like I'm all over the place. And that's why I like to take the notes so you don't think that I'm just all over the place because I'm talking. Um, but it's like when, when God is saying it, it, it's time to go, he's saying, you know, a lot of people are wanting we, we talked about this this morning. We want work. We want all these responsibilities, but you don't have the pain tolerance for it. God's building up your pain tolerance for the next step of what we're going into. Just because you say you're ready, just because you have a degree in it, just because you have a paper in it, just because you've had some experience in it does not mean you have the pain tolerance for it. I said, you got to learn how to say no to things you want that can help you get your way but can get in the way of the way God has prepared for you. And so, all this morning, we were trying to get to where we're going to talk tonight, and, and we just couldn't get there. I, I just couldn't get there. God has me slowing the word down, not trying to perform, not trying to hear any amens, not focusing on any likes and dislikes, and not focus on any that part and this part and facts up and big facts and all the things that people want to use to show that they're hip enough to use the vernacular, but are we born again enough and strengthened enough to carry it out when there's no one hallelujah in your corner? That's where we are now. So let's get back into the word of God. This morning we learned that the children of Israel were waiting, waiting and they were kind of, we were kind of poor. God says, oh, by the way, I'm not going to, oh, here I go again, y'all. I'm not going to wait until you get over there to bless you. God said, I'm going to bless you here. So when you walk into your future, you're blessed. Somebody write that down now. See, you're, you're thinking about going over getting blessed. God says, let me just show you right now. If you wait on me and let me strengthen you, I'm going to bless you first. Then you walk into it. Now, that's a word for you. That's a word, and we can just dismiss right on that word right there. You're waiting on God to bless you when you get over there. That's why you're in a rush to get over there, and you're not waiting on him over here. Your blessing is going to hit right where you are. So the children of Israel didn't have anything, and God impressed upon the hearts and troubled the hearts of all the Egyptians that had mistreated them. All the stuff that you guys have, by the way, I was getting that ready for my children in the first place. 
we look kind of foolish and silly and almost ignorant, spiritually speaking, trying to be jealous or envious of what somebody else is doing. And God is having them to do something that you're going to operate. If you just sit still and watch God, he's getting you ready or he's showing you the opportunities that are going to come to you. We, I, I, I look at all the time people talk to us about the excellent job that our team does on producing uh, these episodes every week. And when I tell them these are just regular old, regular old people in our church who just volunteered to come and they work days, they work nights, they have their own personal job, their own personal lives, and what they do for the church is just volunteer stuff. All the wonderful sets and the screens and the things that are behind me here and this 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 LED board that I wish we would show more of instead of me because that's just some good stuff back there. Yo, yo, zoom in a little bit on that. See, all this, uh, uh, that just, when I said zoom in, they, they kind of know. See, all that, just regular old people. They're not coming to work. They're coming to serve. Both of them, two of them. Sometimes I'm just two people in this whole building, and we just tied it up in here preaching. And somebody would just, how can you keep those people employed and employed? They're getting stuff ready. But they were getting ready years before this. The blessings came. Before the crisis hit. Y'all better hear me this evening. I'm, I'm already out there. The blessings came before the crisis hit. You, you don't want to be around me when the crisis hit. Waiting on a blessing. Because now I'm totally focused on God. But God says I'm going to get you ready for it. Because somebody in the crisis is going to need your strength. Call me if you need me. Why? You're not ready for the call. Because you didn't thank him for the blessing before the crisis. So anyway, in episode 27, we get right here. Then he called me all these PowerPoints that, that I use. And folks, look, boy, you are so technical. What's the word? Technically uh, uh, smart and brilliant. No, I just click a button. God got regular old regular olds teaching me how to click a button. And I didn't have to say that this evening, but sometimes people are just overly impressed of what God is doing with just regular old servants. And when you can't answer the call that God has placed on your life, God has somebody else to do that call. Now, it's not going to slow down because you can't click. So, so watch, watch it. And I'm just, just little things I want you to see tonight. I just want you to see before the crisis hit. We had young people walking out, plugging up this machine, and boy, before the crisis hit. Never thought about it, never appreciated. God just said, get it done, get it done decent order, and get people who know how to operate in excellence. Don't look for nice people. You know, that's just normal. Nice is everywhere. Okay? Just, just, just get people who are going to be steadfast and consistent. And, and watch when the crisis hit, you don't have to run. You have to chase them. And so it says here in Exodus 21, 31 to 35, then he called for Moses and Aaron by, name, by night and said, rise and go from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go and serve the Lord as you have said. Also, take your fox and your herds as you have said and, and be gone and bless me also. And the Egyptians urged the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, Ye, we shall all be dead. For the people took their dough before it was leavened, having their uh, kneading bowls bound up in their, cloth, uh, in their clothes on their shoulders. Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses. And they had asked from the Egyptians, articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. So now they did what God said. A lot of it didn't make sense. And these very poor people now have a lot of good stuff. Y'all, check this out now. They, they were getting this stuff from the, from the, from the, from the north side look like see 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 where we live they call them pawn shops and 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 they just look like regular regular on another side of, of of the city where we live i don't know where you're viewing this from in the country but certain folk called them gold and silver the little trade shops it's the same it's the same place but the name is different so now they have gold and silver and name brand clothing what's the name brand egyptian style 
They were gypsying Egyptian out. That's what they were doing. Israelites busting up in that Egyptian clothes and going over where to the promised land. Came over there, just had little rags on them at first. But before they left, God blessed them. Why? Before he blessed them before. God blessed them before. God blessed them before. God blessed them before. Come on, you need to you need to say this. God blessed me before. God blessed me before. God blessed me before. God blessed them before they took off. The reason some of us are ungrateful when we get our blessing is because you don't realize he blessed you before you took off. What are you complaining about? He's already done. Old folk used to say like this. Now I'm one of them old folk. If the Lord never does another thing for me, he's already done enough. And I'm not one of those old folk because I don't think God's done enough. Thank you, Father, for tomorrow. I look forward to my daily bread. Before. Before. Before the surgery, God blessed you. Before you went through the divorce, God blessed you. Before your mom and dad died, God blessed you. Before the house burned down, God blessed you. He did something before the crisis. And I'm already in, okay, let me, I'm not trying to slow down. You slow down. It, it, it's time for us to remember we're in revival. Instead of complaining, are we having church again? Ask the question, God, are you done? Do, do I, am I getting what you want me to get out of this? What if America's in revival and I about is setting a model? And those of us that I know are blessed are sitting up sometimes, maybe complaining because we have to do this again and I'm so busy with this and so forth. Whatever you're doing right now, God's about to show you that if that's not him, set it down and listen to him. You want God to bless something that you're not using to honor him. You want God to bless something right now that you're not doing to honor him. Because if you honor him, and he said, wait, we got to have a talk. We got to have a revival. We got to have a meeting at 6 o'clock. If you called your children in the house, and they said, as soon as I get through playing ball, you would go at them with both left hands. ta -ta, just like that. That's what you would do. But we don't want to talk about that because I had a flashback on that one. But it would be very disrespectful unless you understood. Daddy's trying to get you ready for something. Mama's trying to get you ready for something. They're getting ready to go. Tonight's subject, because they got all this gold, all this silver, all these clothes. Now they're ready to go. So obviously, it's not, it's not against God for you to have nice things. Obviously, God wants you to have nice things. Okay, let's get off that trip because I think we kind of fell into that this morning. It's, it's God's will for you to have nice things. The problem is, when nice things get a hold of you, you act like you don't know God anymore. God wants you to have a personal life and a social life, but your social life makes you get rid of him. Subject tonight. It's what you do with it. It's what you do with it. That's what we're going to talk about. That's why we're on this part of revival tonight. I'm going to walk this thing out. I'll see. I'll be back in here tomorrow night at 7 o'clock too. Because now, now that, now that God is making it clear to somebody besides me, I just met with a bunch of powerful women. We had a powerful women's fellowship today. A powerful women's fellowship on the phone. Hundreds of ladies on the phone and only two of them didn't mute. That's pretty good, by the way. Two of them don't know where the mute button is, but, but, but when you have a women's fellowship like that and the women are sitting right there in front of that phone now because we understand, man, we may complain about being around each other, but someday you may not have somebody to be around to complain about. It's not that you have a new phone. It's not that you have a new career. It's not that you live on a different side of town. It's not that you have a husband. It's not that you have a spouse. It's not that you have children. It's not that you have animals. It's not that you have responsibility. It's what you do with it. It's what you do with it. Now let's get ready to start the revival. If God calls us in here for the next six months, three times a day, three times a week, if he calls us for the next five days coming up, I am so grateful that God loves us enough to say, I know some children that will come hear me. That, 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 that is an honor. That is an honor. That is an honor. Our spending habits are a good indication of whether you have an idol in your life. What are we talking about tonight? It's what you do with it. It's what you do with it. It's what
is what you do with it. You, you, you got that new thing you've been trying your best to get. And look, look at, look at, and, and it's what you do with it. And, and your spending habit, your spending habits, the way you spend whatever money that you have. Let's talk about money for a little bit because that's what's going to happen before the crisis. You didn't get money during the crisis. You got money before the crisis. That's what made you scared. You thought you were going to lose the money. People that didn't have any money, ain't lost nothing. They ain't thought about that. God bless you with a good job. You may not have even had good talent, good skills, or not even good experience, but God bless you with a good job. Then the thing hit. And you got upset and nervous thinking, what are we going to do now? What were you doing before? Uh, that's my question. It's not what are you going to do now. What were you doing before? Do you spend $100 on clothes or shoes and then put $2 in the offering plate whenever you're at church? If so, then you're turning clothes and shoes and jewelry into idols. If you can spend $3,000 on a pair of shoes and, and when your offering basket comes around, I'm going to say baskets, I don't know what we do, baskets or buckets or whatever we do here. That bucket comes around, and this is not about getting ready to take an offering. No, 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 no. That's not what this is about. This is about him reviving you before we come out of this COVID-19. You spend all of that on stuff and then question whether or not you're going to give God $10? Really? $50? Really? Y you are right now on Amazon looking for something that's on sale for $200 and you're going to get it and then go to Givelify and give God $4 maybe and your tithes for the month end up being $427.36. You won't even round him off to 430 You won't even round him off. You got him down to 427 36 Really? At least you ought to round him off. I'm talking to the people that are being revived now. If, if God hasn't called you into revival, this is one of those things, well, I don't want to hear that. Okay, and so I'm okay because now you, you, you may not have the, the tolerance for where God is taking us now. Do you ever go into debt for your beautiful dream home? Let's, let's see if we can think about being idolizing stuff now your, your, your dream car that one that you oh oh god if i just get that I, if i just get when you get that then you decide you don't have any money left to pay your tithes now i can't get my tithes because i just got this new car and my car payment and my insurance and my down payment on my insurance and my siri not my siri my, my sirius fm and xm and and then my wi-fi all that added up you, before you ever get that car note you need to make sure that none of that is going to interfere with what you've been giving god if so that car is an idol. That car is an idol. If your mortgage, your mortgage payment is so high and you don't think you can pay your tithes now and still live, you've placed a worldly possession higher than your obedience to God. And that, my friend, is an idol. It's called idolatry. It's your God because you're paying more into it than you are into who provided it. We're talking in our country right now. Somebody's saying, hey, it's time to get out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Somebody said, well, people are still dying. People are still dying. It's, a, it's not time to go. Oh, no, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. Why? People need to get out and, what, and get on with their lives. They need their lives back. They need to go out and spend some money. Because we idolize wealth over health. And I'd like to see some of the lawmakers go to the Redbird Mall if they were open. I just would. I mean, just, just, just let, let's, let's take some of the officials and let's let, them, let them bust up the Katy Trail for a few minutes in some places and, and, and go out on the beach in, in, in Florida. Let's just let's let some of the world leaders and policymakers who are who are who are saying let's go back out there and get people to like go out there and, and show them because i'm not coming with you 
I'm not coming with you. And I won't say show us. Show them how to shop and sit there. No, because we tend to idolize money. For a lot of people, money is an idol. A savings account, a bank balance, stocks, bonds, portfolios, stock bond portfolios, and, and, and real estate holdings, that can be an idol in your life. That can be all you live for. Now, does God want me to give up these things and be poor? Absolutely not. Not. God wants you to have it more than you do. God provided it before you even knew you needed it. God was trying to give you wisdom to know how to take it and how to share it and how to build up the kingdom around it. He wants you to have that stuff. God does not want you broke. God wants you to prosper. Everybody listen to this in all things. But above all, God doesn't want you to worship anything but him. He doesn't want you to worship the things that he blessed you with. If God bless you with people around you, he don't want you to worship them. He don't want them worshiping you. And this is what happens with a lot of people. We go from love to worship. I loved you, but I couldn't worship you. I had to spend time with God. I had to pray and seek God, and I had to do some things, and I had to buy, give God something instead of buy. And, and now, I, but, but I thought you loved me. I did, but you took love and made it worship, and I couldn't idolize you. The woman couldn't idolize you, sir. The man could not make you an idol, ma'am. He did. But when the idol broke his heart, that's when he committed suicide. When the idol broke her heart, that's when she went off the bridge because they went from love to worship. And sometimes people aren't pleased with you just loving them. They want you to worship them. And he said, you should have no other God before me. God said that. Some people seem to think, that God wants them to be broke all their lives. And some people think that money is evil. God doesn't want you to be broke, and money is not evil. Let's just say that money is only evil if you idolize it. The Bible said, okay, let me show. Okay, this is, this is let's say this is $50. I put this $50 right here. That $50 is not evil. Look, that $50 is doing absolutely nothing. There's the $50 right there. Now, let's say somebody tries to come and take that $50, and I take some, stab them, beat them, break them down, whip their hair, stomp them. Don't ever touch my $50. Now, that's evil because the love of that $50, that's the money. See, that's the root of the evil. It's the love of it. And sometimes we think, oh, it's cool. It's gangster. It's hip-hop. It's just, it's whatever. It's the love of it. I don't have to work for my money. I can whip you and beat you and kill you for yours. That's evil. The Bible lets us give us warning about it. It's like it does about revival. And in First Timothy, for the love of money, that's the root of it. And 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 and, and ladies and gentlemen, here's something that we always miss out when we read the scripture. He said the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. That, uh, when you start loving money, see, see, you, you'll, you'll do things for money when you start loving and worshiping it that you just, just wouldn't normally do as your normal self. So it isn't the money that's evil. It's the love of it. And those people who are always thinking about money and the things that money can buy, they'll start to pursue those things instead of pursuing God. And that money will have you butt naked on the table, young girl. Because you're running for the money. You're running for the money. Everything is running for the money, and it's money-driven. And it's, it'll have you in all kind of evil things, just the love of the money. You're going to dance in a room full of people for a dollar? For a dollar? Now, I'm not, I'm not promoting that you ever do it, but for a dollar? Son, you're going to go up and... Put a gun to an old lady's head. You're going to sell our ladies, girls cheap for a dollar? It's the love of it. 
Now, during this revival, us being digital evangelists, maybe one somebody here will take this message to as a digital, and I said that way too fast, as a digital, as an electronic, as a modern, as a 2020 preacher of the gospel. Okay, you don't have, get to knock on the doors and kick down the apartments and talk to them, but you pick up your iPad and say, say, dude, pastor is preaching about something right here. Go online right now. Check this out, cat. This is cool, man. He's talking about something. And so as an evangelist, see, you push it and go out. So God gave you a, an iPad and you got everything on it except the, except the message. Set up, you can sit up all night scrolling other folks' business, trying to figure out what they're doing and why they're doing it and how they're doing it. But how many times do people know you to just send a word and say, hey, hey, and not just at church. I'm talking about after church. I'm talking about tomorrow when you wake up. You know, I, I, I want to just say what Pastor said in the word last night. Find a pastor, find out where you're, where you're being fed. You don't have to go out and try to figure out what somebody else said. Figure out what God is feeding you. That, that's money. You may not get any thumbs up. But I promise you, when God hears you teaching his word and showing somebody his word, he's going to give you what we call exaltation. He will exalt you. It says right here in Exodus 23 through 5. Look, you, and this is personal now. This is you and I. Let's just say there's nobody in this room watching with you and I. All We don't know who else is watching. But he said, Here's what I want you to understand. I'm, I'm going to keep blessing you, but you're not going to be, you're not going to do me or you any good if you die from the stress of trying to, just trying to make the money. Okay? He said, you shall have no other gods. See that little G? That's what money is. That money is a little G. Because it's somebody's God. You shall have no other gods before me. You should not make for yourselves any carved images, any likeness of anything that's in heaven and above or anything that's earth beneath. I'm going to share you something. Well, I'm going to keep reading the scripture. Now, let me just, God, please, it's on my heart. I was talking to a group of young people before about the, the whole ancient art of tattoos. And what we didn't sometimes understand is I think sometimes people wear tattoos because, um, you know, it's cool. It's a fashion statement or what, whatever it is or or whatever that is, and I don't want to get into that because I'm not an expert at that. I know nothing about it. But when studying the, the art and the, uh, the actual uh, heritage in which tattoos were made, what would happen in this particular culture is that they, they, would, they would make a mark on their skin, and it was believed that that mark was so embedded in their hearts that if you rub their skin long enough, it would come forth on their skin. And so just the very thought of a tattoo means that you have placed something on your body that is the most important aspect of your entire life. And if you were ever given permission by God to do that, something in that should reflect who he is. And when our young people were taught about it, they decided, well, I don't know if I know anything in my life that's so embedded in me that if you keep rubbing on my skin, it will come forth. Because I love the Lord, but I don't know if you would keep rubbing on my skin that God will come forth. When you serve other gods, you open doors for the enemy to bring destruction into your life. And I want to talk about that tonight. I got about 15, 20 more minutes to do so. You bring you bring. Permission for the enemy to say, okay, now I know what you idolize, so I can use that against you. However, this relates to a whole lot more than that. Anything you put before God is an idol. Anything you put before God in your life is an idol. If, if you know God has a word for you tonight, and right now, you know that there's something else that you'd rather do than kind of listen to him. I, well, uh, uh, Pastor Rush, it's not, it's just my hobby. It's just my, listen, according to what he said now, that's an idol. I'm going to let that sink in. So, an idol can be a spouse. Well, he just said, you know, we always go to church. And so tonight, I just wanted, he just wanted, and we just wanted, and we, okay, I, I agree with that. Great, wonderful, fantabulous, fantastic.
Your career could be an idol. I've talked to people every time you talk to them. I mean, it's just, it's about the career. It's about the career. The time you spend watching television programs, you can idolize it. I couldn't believe one day I finally was able to look at a show and it was called The American Idol. And we couldn't even have church because the idol was on. An idol can be anything that you pursue more than you pursue your relationship with the Lord. That's the dog. People have other lives. I know. I know. I know. That's, and that's why we're in revival now. And think about it. Everything we idolized, God let it shut down. We idolize athletes. Stadiums are shut down. We idolize our rock stars. Entertainment venues shut down. We idolize casinos <laughs> shut down. We even started to idolize people in the church shut down. And now, they, see, they don't go out and play football without people. Because I guess that would be considered practice. We idolize money. <laughs> and the economy shut down. Everything we worshipped got dried up. And if God hasn't said open it up, then th those that maybe worship money could say, open it up. Who cares about the slaughter? Pharaoh says, who cares about all of my men drowning in the Red Sea? Go get those Israelites now. He lost his old army chasing the gold, silver, and clothes. In the Old Testament, we constantly see the children of Israel. They kept falling under a curse. Every time they fell away from God. Because we start out good with it. Oh, I love God. I love church. Oh, I love coming. Then all of a sudden, I mean, I love coming to Monday school. I love coming to church. Oh, Pastor Rose, can we meet with the young people again? Can we meet with, the, with this? Can we meet with the seniors? Can we meet with the... And then all of a sudden, we get that swing, and then we get used to it. Then we kind of back out of it a little bit. You know, kind of tired. My feet hurt. They've been working me a lot. The kids, the wonderful, blessed kids that you ask God for. It, it seems that one day they were serving God, and boy, they were prospering. And the next day, they were doing their own thing. Dabbling out there worshiping those false gods. And it was amazing because the very gold and silver that God blessed them with, guess what they did, y'all? They went out and built them a false god with the gold and silver. Since, since, since Moses, since God is not moving fast enough, we're going to build our own God, worship him, and see if he can't give us an answer. That's, 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 that's what we do. Since the church is not having any activities, I'll go out here, I'll turn the lights down, I'll dance, I'll pop it, I'll thump it, I'll still do the music, and to show you how much I'm influenced by it, if I get in church, I'll bring the same thing from out there in the church, and I'll make it look like it's something that'll please me, and then it'll keep people coming, because what I gotta do is I gotta, I gotta worship what they like, and, and, and I can use as many scriptures as I want to, but I have to understand what motivated these moves, what motivated these gyrates, what makes me pop it and thump it. Yeah, I'm popular. Yeah, I'm selling a million, but I'm selling out. Because it's money. God didn't call us to revival for us to be a nice little Easter speech.
God makes it very clear. If you aren't serving him first, you really aren't serving him, period. You're just kind of putting him on your schedule because right now you're in between jobs. You're in between women. You're in between men. You're in between careers. You're in between success. You're in between children. You're in between waiting. And so God says, if you're, if you're, not, if you're not serving me first, you really aren't serving me because whatever is getting your most attention, your first service, that's where you're worshiping. I know you're blessed. I know you're blessed. I know you're hearing him. I know you're hearing him. I know you're hearing me. So, 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 so a, a lot of Christians fall into a pattern that's, that's very much like the Israelites. And we got to be careful as Christians, okay? I'm talking about us now, okay? And I'm not one of these people that's down in Christians. I don't get into that kind of crazy stuff. But, but a lot of times we will trust God to direct us. And then the next day you go to the horoscope or the local newspaper or to Siri or something else for direction. God, lead me here. Then we get there. Then we switch over. God brings us to a certain point, And then we switch over to something else for the rest of the directions. If God brought us out here, y'all, why don't we just wait until he finished talking? Well, yeah, the Lord brought us out. He brought us through many dangers, toils, and snares. Are you through with it? Or are you through waiting on him? Has he, has he finished talking? Oh, pastor, God brought us in here until May. It's May. We ought to be done yet. Well, well who are you, God. It may and it may not be. If you listen to God, your steps are ordered. But he's not going to give you your entire destiny in one move. You take a step and you trust him for the next one. If God says, I want you in nine more months, four times a sun, on a Sunday, I'm willing to walk that out. Let me tell you about God so you'll just always know this. If God gives you a command to do something, he has already ordered you the strength to do it. So the one thing you'll know is, well, if God said it, that means I'm able. He's not saying I go out there and run 17 laps every day so you can be ready for these three services. At the height of when God told me to start doing these three services, we were doing one. Newsflash, I was preparing, getting ready, starting the free surgical injections, x-ray, all that. To top specialists, I'd go to everyone because I was supposed to by now have been completed with a very serious spinal surgery. I was physically not able to complete one of these. And in the midst of that, God says three. And when I started telling the staff and family about three, everyone's looking like, uh, does, your do does your doctor, wait a minute, do, do you know what you're going through? And I'm looking like God must know that I'm going to go through something better because he started strengthening me for this. And I guarantee you it uh, Sunday three times, Monday, at a time in my age when I'm thinking about retiring, God said retiring, boy, you ain't retiring, you're in revival, you're reloading. And the fellowship of people around you, if they can't deal with it, they got to understand you're reloading. And when you start getting revived, when God starts seeing you under him first and he starts to restore your strength, the years that Satan, let me, the years that Satan stole your strength, God's going to restore them. I don't have time to fool around, act like I'm 20 years old. I don't ever want to be 20 again. Do you know how stupid I was at 20? Oh, God. Oh, God. I was so stupid at 20, I didn't even know I was 20. I was 20 trying to act old. And, and, and some of you older people, stop trying to act like you don't want to get old. There's a blessing waiting on you over here. But he's blessing you here so you can rejoice over here. You, you, get, get rid of your fear of getting old because the, the solution to that is dying. So I'm just going to tell you. But, 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 but sometimes we go to church on Sunday, but then on Monday we want to call a psychic. Say you love the Lord, but you won't spend any time with him. Whether you have to spend your time with everything and everyone else except the Lord. We had a call today at 3 o'clock. Thousands of other women should have been on that call. Examine your life. Here's a question. What's the temperature of your love for the Lord? Are you becoming spiritually cold right now? 
Well, I just go up there because I work at the church. I just go up there because I got this to do. I just, you know what I know about this ministry, for those of you who have never visited before, if this is your first time online, you, you got to come in here one day when church is re- reopened, and you got to just get a dose of the temperature in this place. This place is on fire for God. It's so on fire. When something is on fire for God and some cold gets in it, they just melt away. I just didn't fit in. No, you, you got burnt. You were so cold that either you didn't catch the fire of God or God melted your coldness. But you need to check your temperature now. You need to check your temperature. I don't need, I don't, I don't need, I, I, I love, oh my God, we love people more than any people in the world, I believe, I, I, and I just, that's just my assumption. But, but I don't need a whole lot of folk to get fired all up before I'm ready to get the word of God. I don't, I mean, I look, now I, I'm, I'm black, I'm black, black preacher, been preaching all my life as a black person. I ain't been white but one time. Y'all didn't know me then. But I don't need to warm up. I, I love, we love that organ. We love that piano. We love that drum. We love that stuff behind us. But God said, can you just go like you go when it's just me and you? See, I, 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 I practice talking to God before I get around y'all. I can't just get up here and go to talking like this. I'll be looking for too much approval. Sometimes folks say, wait, but you're just a little long-winded. Because I talk to God long all the time. If you're not used to talking to God, then you're used to talking at people about God. I like to talk to him. So you need to check your thermometer. Are you becoming cold? I mean spiritually. There are people I know who probably need to fast and pray a little bit more and turn off the television maybe a couple of weeks, shut down your internet, go on a Facebook fast, go on an Instagram fast for a minute, spend that time with God. Need to get in his word and get your hearts and minds back on track. Stop spending up night looking for stuff to buy and sell and trade and people to deal with and for other folks' conversation. And just shut it down and watch how God can just open your heart, open your mind, watch how nice you'll become. You read so many different crazy ideas that everybody you look at, you think is acting like some of these folk whose business had nothing to do with yours. And God said to us this morning, mind your own business. There was a time when you used to have to go somewhere, at least go somewhere to be nosy. You can be nosy all day, sit in your and get envious, jealous, and worship, and never get out the bed. I'm just learning how to get exposed to the internet, and I can sit there and don't even know. I push some somebody's business come up, and I'm sitting there. What is that? Before I know what I'm looking at, it flipped to somebody else's business, and then before I know, then it flipped to somebody else's business. Then that business was kind of different for me, so I want to flip back. It's gone. You missed it. And I'm like, gosh, this is how it happened. Before you know it, an hour has passed. And it's so convenient, I don't have to seek it. Check this out. It's seeking me. And so I said, all right, I got to shut that down. I got to shut that down. The good news, guys, is that God will move all those mountains if you got a cold heart. And if you, you need to go on a, some kind of a... A social media fast. But pastor, that's what we're using today is social media. I know that we have other means of it. I'm not saying that it's, it just, we should, some people should just fast in it maybe. You know everything about how to run electronics when it comes to getting another book. Ben, can you research a scripture? Do, do you really know how to find a solution to something biblically if you needed to? And if you can't, then that's my fault. And that's why I'm here now teaching this because it's time for us to get revived. There was a time when everybody talks about what the church used to be like. What does the church look like right now? And the good news is that God will move all of those mountains for those who will get the idols out of their lives and put him first. You ever tried to take somebody? I, my God. You just could walk up and just speak to people in church. You, you got to interrupt them looking down at somebody else who's not around. And whatever the deal has nothing to do with church. It's just. And I deal with the phone all the time. I keep a Bluetooth in my ear because I'm always in a conversation. I'm always trying to reach a member, reach people, talk to people. Because I love that. But man, I can't, I can't imagine outside of the scope of just talking to folk that that you don't even know how to talk to or who, whoever they are. 
So sometimes you got to move some of those gods because you can idolize it. That's all I'm saying. That's family talk. You're, 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 and if you're right now in that state of mind saying, well, I don't necessarily agree with that, then, then, then it's okay. Check your, check your temperature. Take your temperature because we're not, this isn't a pastor here. I'm not here fussing at you. We don't do that here. We don't do that. I'm, I'm not fussing, I'm not hollering, but, but I'm just saying, you know, we, we got we to gotta come into a, a kind of an agreement. I don't mind talking to people. I'll talk to people 15 minutes before church. For those of you who don't know this ministry, I'll call people and say, hey, 15 minutes from now, church starts. And po- folk will probably wonder, I- 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 is he going to be too busy for that? I'm never too busy for the people of God because I want to make sure that everybody understands. We're going to get to talk to God tonight. God's got something to say. How do I know? Because I, I, he talked to me about it first. And I'm like, gosh, I get to say that tonight, God? You want me to say that? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh, it's probably like I never preached before in my life. Now, I've never done that until like this last Two years, because I didn't have the technology for that. But I'll call her and say, hey, church starts in 30 minutes. And then after church, sometimes I'll call her, leave a message and say, thanks for tuning in. That was great tonight. And now it's gotten so, it's gotten so probably different that some folks say, well, I saw the message. I just didn't read it. You're so disrespectful. That's so disrespectful. Don't do that to me. Don't do that to us. Don't do that to your ministry. Okay? At least read it and forget it. Delete it. <laughs> Check your temperature. If the message is bothering you, if the sermons get like, well, it's kind of so long. Check your temperature. Where are you? Every time the children of Israel, every time the Israelites moved all other gods from their lives, the Lord started to bless them. You, you start getting rid of your idols and things that are calling, causing all your time, then God will bless. I had to go on a fast Probably for about, man, I don't even know. Because I love, I have animals. I love my horses and all that. And I went on a fast from just not riding, not even really caring for them more. I had to have somebody to help me do that. And I just had went on the pass, and then my body was, like I said earlier, just breaking down. I couldn't lift a shovel. I couldn't, I couldn't brush. I couldn't lift a baby. I couldn't do anything. My body physically was just falling apart. And right in front of the congregation, it was falling apart, and I never talked about it. I would come in and lay out. I couldn't shake hands. I couldn't embrace people. God would give me, seemed like, the strength to just get up here, teach the Word of God. Nobody ever knew what I was going through. Some folks said, man, you know, he's kind of changed. I remember when he used to walk up to the balcony. I remember when the people wouldn't sit in the balcony. They'd sit on the floor and walk and talk to me too. So I remembered all that, but I didn't bring that up in a negative way. And just in the midst of that, God said, now go to three services. Three services win, God. Right now. Right now. And I'm telling you, God has blessed and healed and delivered my body. So I got, some of you don't know, I got two horses up at the church right now. Right now, I don't have to go home. I can sit right at the church, ride them, feed them, feed, do, all, do all the stuff that I couldn't do. Until I stopped idolizing and I just said, okay, I'm done with that. God, I'll spend that time with you then. Now, I'm back to fulfilling and doing those things that are, are the little hobbies that I love to do. If the Lord called you to spend the day with him one day alone, would you, would you do it? Now, now. Now, I'm just saying, w- would you do it? I'm not talking, ooh, let's have some recreational fun, and let's make it a Greek church event. And let- no, you, if God said for you, one day, spend some time with me. No, nah, we want to make it, ooh, let- we can eat, and we can, who said we, if he called it for you? We had a revival with God five, a few, couple of weeks ago. Five nights straight, God just talked to us right in our homes. And he might be about to do it again. Would you do it? Would you do it? Would you tell him, Lord, I'd do it except, you know, there's a couple of hours during the day now. If if we could do it before 7 or 8, because what you call comes on, and I don't know, I got to see this next episode. Or I could do it between this and that, because me and what you call comes on. Or I would do it, Lord, uh, I I couldn't do it, because um, this job I got, um, I I have to, you know, there's some things I, 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 I really need to focus on. Would you tell God that you couldn't spend time with him because, Lord, I'm right in the middle of this relationship. And me and, me and him, me and her, we're just trying to work some things out. And she said, I'm not spending enough time. I, I, I would do it, Lord. But, 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 but I, 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 would, I would do it, but I can't do it right now, God, because, you know, I, I, yeah, oh, I'll catch you later. That's your idol. Whatever you would put before him, 
That's your idol. When Satan knows that you idolize your children more than you idolize God, when you start worshiping those beautiful babies, he starts attacking their health, and he's coming out to their lives so he can get you. I'm just telling you what God is telling us right now. I don't know the idols in your life. I don't know what they are. I don't know what you're serving more than you're serving God. I don't know what you're spending your tithe money on instead of giving it to God to storehouse. See, the rent people say that's for your rent. The light people say that's for your light. The gas people say that's for your gas. The electronic people say that's for your electronics. The Wi-Fi people say that's for the Wi-Fi. See, all these things have already been allocated. God says, first, I want you to take care of your future. That's what your tithe is. We say, oh, that doesn't seem real. The church will be all right. So we cut his out because we idolize all of these. God has called you to give up that idol and to obey him. And he promises tremendous blessings. I think it's just best that we end this message with the scripture. Because if I were listening to this and I were not confident in the Lord, I would almost... I would almost say, well, that just kind of sounds like you're putting people into condemnation and all. I would have to let the word hear it because nobody likes to be told that we're idolizing things because it sounds like we're just, I'm just loving, Pastor. No. No. When you start to idolize and worship things, it, it breaks you. It breaks you way too far down. Okay? Um, one of the greatest problems with addictions is that you start worshiping that. See, from people that I've known, that I've loved, that I've worked with and ministered with, with alcohol, that becomes a God. Because with God, what do we know? If I take it to God, he can fix it, but it takes him too long. But once I become dependent on this, and it gets in my system, it can take me to that place of peace. And now I can do it over and over again. And guess what? I get the same results. This God never fails me. So now I'm addicted to it. And I can stay away from it for a while, but eventually he calls me because he's my burden bearer, my heavy load sharer. He's my, he's my heart fixer, my mind regulator. And once Satan knows that's your idol, he'll use that to take you out. Let's go to the scripture, and I just want the word of God to minister to us. Just let the word talk. I'm just going to let the word talk. I'm just going to read straight word. I'm not going to interrupt it. And then at the end, we're going to ask you to say something with me, and we're going to be gone. So the best way that God has instructed me to fix this tonight with us is just let us hear straight from him. You can argue with the pastor. You can say, oh, he doesn't know. And I don't. I don't. All of us have different weird things about us. Let's just say that. There's nothing ordinary about any of us as Christians. But I want you to ask yourself, are you aware of what you're idolizing? In Leviticus 26, Message Bible, it says, don't make idols for yourselves. Don't set up an image or a sacred pillar for yourselves. And don't place a carved stone in your land that you can bow down to in worship. And we learned tonight that it doesn't have to be made of stone. And it could be something you drink. It could be somebody. Your, your, it could be your job. It could be your house, okay? So this is, it's the same thing here. He says, I am God, your God. Keep my Sabbaths. Treat my sanctuary with reverence. I'm God. If you live by my decrees and obediently keep my commandments, I'll send the rains in their seasons. The ground will yield its crops. And the trees of the field, their fruit. You're going to be blessed, dude. Okay, let me stay with the word. You, know, you, you will thresh until the grape harvest, and the grape harvest will continue until planting time. You'll have more than enough to eat. And will live safe and secure in your land. I'll, I'll make the country a place of peace. 
And you'll be able to go to sleep at night without fear. This is the Bible. I didn't make this. I'll get rid of the wild beasts. I'll eliminate war. You'll chase out your enemies and, and defeat them. Five of you will chase 100 and 500 of you will chase 10,000 and do away with them. And I'll give you my full attention. 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 Sometimes we're, we're, we're worshiping an idol. We want all the attention on us. We want, and God said, but I'll give you my full attention. I'll make sure you prosper. I'll make sure you grow in numbers and keep my covenant with you in good working order. The covenant is based on, on, on what you're, you're giving. You, you, you made a promise with me, right? You'll be eating from last year's harvest when you have to clean out the barns to make room for new crops. And, and what he's saying is you're going to have a savings account if you just do what I tell you to do. I'll set up my residence in your neighborhood. I won't avoid or shun you. I'll stroll through your streets. I'll be your God. And you'll be my people. What's God promised us? What's he promising us, y'all? Total provision. Total fulfillment. Total goodness. Total safety. Total security. That's the promise. All of that. That's what we just read right there. And all I have to do is pay a tithe, an offering, pay, pay, pay the bill. And if I do that, he'll give me multiplication. So one of the things I did was I just decided to stop waiting until I felt like giving, and I put it on, thank God for electronic giving, I put it on something that we call, um, what's it, well, recurring, recurring gifts, where I just every day wake up, I don't even look at it. Give, give. If I'm breathing, this comes out of my account. If if I'm breath, if I'm not breathing, this comes out of my account. So I get my breath back. I just don't even play with it. And I was one of those people that mm, I would give, but you know, it had to be an occasion like Sunday morning or something. Now the occasion is I'm alive. And so now I don't have to deal with anybody else when it comes to the God multiplying in my life. Someone will probably insult me saying, I bet you help other people too. I sure do. And with an attitude like that, I would almost ask God to help me to not help you if you wonder if I'm helping others because that's what I do. Because that's what he does. And it's no secret. It's no secret. It's no private thing. So what is God going to do if we just keep our covenant? Write this down real quick. He just said in those scriptures, all those scriptures said that he's going to walk among us. He's going to reveal himself to us and have spiritual fellowship with us. Now, let's see where we fit in. He's going to walk among us, reveal himself to us, and have spiritual fellowship with us. You get it? That's a pretty cool team. Everything is us. It ends with us. So when you're in revival, it's God's plan for us to come together, y'all. <laughs> it's all about us coming together with. Him. So he said he's going to walk among us. He's going to reveal himself to us. That's what he's doing now. Pastor, when is this going to be over with? Don't worry about when it's over with. He's walking with us. He's revealing himself to us. And now he, he's going to have spiritual fellowship with us. You're not going to be getting up at night because you're scared of no monsters. You're going to be getting up at night because God is saying, hey, it's just me. Wake up. Spend a little time with me. Speak in tongue. Pray in your heavenly language. And those of you that are listening, yes, we believe that and we do that. People laugh if they want to. You know, I don't care. If that's a weird church, then that's okay. We're weird. I just roll over sometime. Just do your little mumble, your little bladder, as ugly as it sounds. Give it to God. He said, that's my baby. It's my baby's talking to me. Get on back with your sleep. Instead of getting up in the morning now and complaining about aches and pains, I get up in the morning and see what I can stretch. What, what new stretch can I do today, God? What's the new stretch? So all that we've learned today is real simple. Choosing to walk under the blessings of God is not a one-time decision. 
It's a choice that you have to make every single day. So whenever God's calling us back in here, you say to somebody else, I got to go. I got to go because we're in revival. Man, y'all sure been in, y'all been in revival three months? And you go, yeah, so far. Change the way you look with it. Yeah, so far. Y'all been in revival. I mean, I, I remember him saying y'all were going in revival in March, back in February. Y'all, y'all, COVID is going on. Y'all still in revival now that the thing hit, the corona? Yeah, so far. Well, I thought he said it was just going to be three months. We're still in it so far. You're not going to get fired. You're going to have to improve your work because you'll get removed. Because now he wants to walk and he wants to depend on it. Satan wants to steal it from you. Here's what I want everybody to say with me right now, wherever you are. Let's make this commitment and let's let the devil hear us say it. Because I spoke about a lot of them tonight. And I had no idea I'd ever be here and I'd never talked about these before. And we'd never been in revival like this before. And so I want to help you to stay strong. So you say, oh, I can't wait to go back to church. You can go. They have churches all over the place. There was a wonderful little group out there today on the parking lot on the side of the cross street over there having church. There's no way you can stop going to church. But don't you lose faith in having church where God sent you. Let's repeat this. This is my commitment statement. Say, I will have no idols in my life. I will have no idols in my life. Say that. I will have no idols in my life. See it? I will have no idols in my life. I will have no idols in my life. Any way you fix it. Let's refocus. Let's refocus what has stolen our attention. Sometimes when you got to spend time in the word of God, you got to go to church, you got to preach, and somebody going to check and make sure you're not going to church, and I can't believe y'all have church on that that person wants to be worshipped and that uh, that's, that's an idol. Got to be careful with that. Satan will not only destroy your life, he'll kill you and your idol will move on to the next person to steal and kill and destroy. I appreciate you being in here tonight. This has been so great, y'all. This has been so great. I don't know of an episode, and maybe one day we'll have some kind of something where we'll decide which episode blessed you the most. Every one, I said that one right there. That was my favorite episode. We are on episode 27, and I think episode 27 had to be in a, another awakener uh, 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 for me. And and so and and so now remember what the name of episode 27. I usually put them at the end of the episodes, but I'm gonna go back, so we'll do it. But 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 remember what this was called. Now from the beginning, whenever somebody asks you, so what do you talk about? He, he talked tonight about it. It's 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 what you do with it. It's not that there's wrong anything having a job and a car and a house and a this and a that and a, and a nice church and a plant and that. It's what you do with it. It's all right to have money, but don't let that money have you. It's all right to have a future and a goal, but don't let that goal have you. Everybody's talking about destiny and purpose. If destiny and purpose, you can write about them, you can sing about them, you can preach about them, but don't let that thing have you. You, you better stay rooted with where God has called you. Thank you, Father, for revealing your word to me today. Thanks for watching and for being bold and unashamed. Looking for even more content from Ibach and Pastor Ricky G. Rush? Make sure you're following Ibach and Pastor Rush on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For even more info right at your fingertips, the new mobile app is available for iOS and Android in the iTunes and Google Play stores. And don't forget that an important part of accomplishing God's mission are the tithes and offerings we receive from faithful viewers just like you. Won't you make a difference and become a fisher of men, supporting the ministry work of IBOC 
and helping us change thousands of lives all over the world. Visit us online at ibachchurch.org or on our mobile app to make your donation. You can also give through Givelify in just a few short steps. Thanks for your support. That's it for now, but be sure to tune in next week for another powerful message from the Master Illustrator, Pastor Ricky G. Rush. Rush.